大した違いはないだろう<laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the anime villains that got the sweetest kind of karma. Number 30 Cyrano and DR Monsters 103 Mercy's Dragon Damnation. With a dragon horn in tow, these two so called master swordsmen tried to use fear and lies to loot a town. But their plan had one major flaw they used Ryama as a fall guy. Unable to accept the slight against his honor, he proceeds to show Cyrano and DR what a real swordsman looks like. <laughs> Turns out, it involves killing your enemy with a single, gorgeously animated swing. <gasps> What's more, Ryuma goes on to slay their dragon too. You might say he's just showing off, but since Cyrano and DR brought this upon themselves, it feels only fair. <laughs> Number 29, Charles and Marianne v. Britannia, Code Geass Lelouch of the Rebellion. Lelouch's parents were willing to sacrifice everything for their warped ideals of power, including the well being of their own children. <laughs> Well, they wanted a fresh start so bad, Lelouch finally decided to give it to them, permanently. There's something oh so vindicating about everyone's collective unconsciousness turning against Charles and Marianne's plan, especially since Lelouch is the one who gets to read them their last rites. <laughs> After everything they did to Nunnally, Lelouch, and really the whole world, their terrified screams are basically music to our ears. Charles and Marianne should feel lucky, with their crimes dissolving into nothingness is getting off easy. <laughs> Number 28, Flazard, Dragon Quest Adventure of Dai. Even though he was only resurrected a year, the commander of the Blizz Blaze Legion made a name for himself as the cruelest, most bloodthirsty creature in the land. So when Dai finally decided to show him the pointy end of his sword, it was a long time coming. So much so, Flazard had to die twice. As if getting ripped in half by Dai's air slash wasn't embarrassing enough, Flazard comes back with new Shadow Legion armor, only to immediately get torn to bits all over again. <laughs> Not that we're complaining, we got double the payback for the price of one. <laughs> Number 27, Yami Marek, Yu Gi Oh! Duel Monsters. As the manifestation of his host's rage, envy, and suffering, Yami Marek always had to die. And it's only fitting that Marek himself gets to do the honors. Now, if you can just stay on your feet for a few moments longer, you'll witness my triumph over the Pharaoh! In the middle of a white knuckled duel with Yugi, the Ishtar heir realizes he needs to accept his mistakes, not ignore them. Marek wrestles control of his body back just in time to forfeit the match. And when his life points hit zero, so do Yummy Marek's. What are you doing? I'm honoring the Ishtar name by surrendering the duel. Sure, it's a seemingly empowering moment for the character and all, but really, the whole episode is worth watching just to see Yummy Marek finally beg for mercy. You'll be sorry. You need me. Be gone. I surrender this duel to the Pharaoh. No! Number 26, Bishop Mosgus, Berserk. Murder, torture, kidnapping, Bishop Mosgus had done it all. But it's okay, he's doing it for God, though so he claims. 
If Mosgus' teachings were real divine intervention, something tells us they wouldn't have led him into Guts' warpath. Spoiler! Mosgus is gonna need a whole lot more than prayers to make it through this one. <laughs> Then again, that's what you get for capturing Casca. As punishment, Musgus is loaded with explosives, stabbed through the gut, and sent plummeting to his doom. While the 2016 Berserk doesn't have the greatest reputation, even ugly CGI can't disguise how brilliant this death scene is. <laughs> Number 25, Light Yagami, Death Notes. Justice is a big talking point in Death Notes. For example, Light Yagami uses it as justification to go on a murder spree with the namesake notebook. <laughs> Considering all the lives he's taken, simple life in prison feels too tame. So does being gunned down by his former colleagues. As it turns out, there's only one fate worthy of someone like Light, and that's having his own name written in the death notes. <laughs> Whether he's remembered as an egotistical killer or an idealistic vigilante, Light dies the exact same way as all of his victims. If that's not justice, we don't know what is. Number 24, Berthold Hoover, Attack on Titan. Most of the time, seeing someone eaten alive is cause for mourning, not celebration. But in Berthold's case, we'll make an exception. Let's see, he killed thousands of innocents, lied about it, got exposed, and then tried to murder everyone all over again. Did we miss anything? Thankfully, Berthold got what was coming to him. After losing to Eren, he's poetically torn apart by, you guessed it, a titan. <laughs> What's more, Armin then absorbs his powers and uses the colossal titan to attack Berthold's own home. There's never been a better example of the phrase, what goes around, comes around. Number 23, Iak Kujan, Mobile Suit Gundam, Iron-Blooded Orphans. This guy's hubris knows no bounds. Everything Iak did, killing turbine pilots, endangering his army, being an all-around jerk, can be boiled down to his distinctly hateable personality. <laughs> In the end, it even got him squashed to death inside his own mech. You want to know the most embarrassing parts? He practically won the fight. Akihiro was already down for the counts. But ever the one to relish a victory, Eok just had to have the last word. Unbeknownst to him, those same words inspired Akihiro to get up and dole out some vengeance. Eok's literal crushing defeat was the perfect note to end Iron-Blooded Orphans on. Number 22, Kyoya Tachibana. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Villains take notes. This is exactly what you don't want to do after getting a taste of victory. Kyoya made quite a few enemies attacking the Nation of Tempest, and instead of laying low for a while, he paraded around thinking no one could stop him. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, Hakuro was more than willing to prove him wrong. The elderly swordsman almost immediately wipes the smug smile off Kyoya's face. Huh? In fact, once Hakuro finishes, Kyoya doesn't even have a head left at all. So much for being the greatest, right? 
Either way, it's always nice seeing a jerk actually cut down to size. <laughs> Number 21, Dagon, Jujutsu Kaisen. No one dices up kisses the way Toshi Fushiguro does. Just look at Dagon. The special grade pushed every sorcerer in Shibuya to their limits. But when Toshi shows up, it becomes such a one-sided beating, you almost start to feel bad for the curse. Almost. Any pity is drowned out with sheer adrenaline. Toji beats Dagon into fish food with attacks so brutal, it's almost cathartic to watch. By the time all is said and done, Dagon is just a glorified shish kebab, and that's putting it nicely. Toji's ferocity is not for the faint of heart, but damn, is it something to behold. Number 20, Morphed Demon, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. <laughs> Slicing off the heads of lesser demons is all par for the course in the final selection. Dealing with a giant monstrosity made entirely of arms, not so much. As it happens, this disgusting creature is intrinsically tied to Tanjiro, since it's the same being that slaughtered Orokodaki's former disciples as vengeance for being imprisoned. As such, in order to put the ghosts of Sabito and Makomo to rest, Tanjiro utilizes all his training to put an end to the Hanzi Demon's revenge spree, which he accomplished in style thanks to the sharpness of his water-breathing techniques. Number 19, Biscus T. Balmus, The Rising of the Shield Hero. While there are still plenty of Naofumi's enemies that deserve to get axed off, looking at you, mine, we won't deny that seeing this would-be holy man meet such a damning end still made for a memorable step in Shield Hero's rise to redemption. With a false divine weapon at his command and the life force of his congregation fueling his magic, the Pope of the Three Heroes Church seeks to wipe out the non-faithful and take over the kingdom for himself. At least until Naofumi busts out the blood sacrifice and ensnares him between a set of mechanical demon teeth. <laughs> Number 18, Kureo Mado, Tokyo Ghoul. The CCG might have shed a few tears when this elite ghoul hunter was terminated by Toka, but we sure as hell weren't. Despite being the model of fatherhood back at home, apparently, and a shining example to Amon, supposedly, Mado was shown to be a tad too enthusiastic about his work taking great pleasure in killing Hinami's parents, all before coming back to hunt her down with a weapon made from their remains. That's pretty sick stuff, hence why we applauded the Anteku employee for delivering a rather brutal retirement plan to the bloodthirsty Giza. <laughs> Number 17, Sadler. How not to summon a demon lord. You'd think that after Diablo turned him to stone, this paladin would realize that he wasn't the almighty top dog he thought he was. Nope. Turns out, after being brought back by his fellow zealots, Sadler had convinced himself he was practically a god, one even capable of controlling a demon lord with his minuscule magic. Joke's on him. Since after an enraged Clem transforms into a legitimate Hellspawn, she not only blinds the holy prick with her mere presence, but magically nukes him and his cronies. Number 16, Lord Embryo, Crossange. Ange. 
There were plenty of people that gave Ange grief during her exile, but none were viler than this high and mighty would-be deity. As the creator of the world of mana, Embryo exists in both a physical body as well as inside of a mecha that housed his soul. Given how he had Ange degrade herself for his amusement, it was only fitting that he should be killed twice over. First by Ange's beloved Tusk, and finally by Ange herself, by blowing both his robots and soul to kingdom come. <laughs> Number 15, Zorin Blitz, Helsing Ultimate. You will pay. You're going to pay. You'll pay! You don't exactly need much of a reason to want to see a Nazi vampire get killed, because they're Nazi vampires. And yet, among all of Millennium's ranks, none inspired more ire and hate quite like Zorin Blitz. Her assault on the Helsing headquarters not only resulted in the death of Pip, but she also used her illusions to make Ceres revisit the time both her parents were murdered before her eyes, and when she got shot, and what happened to her mother? While Zorin sliced off her arm and eyes back in reality. Yeah, losing her face was the least she deserved. <laughs> Number 14, Deep Sea King, One Punch Man. Nice fight. There's no villain that can survive the unstoppable love taps that Saitama can inflict, but this ruler of the deep made it personal when he not only roughed up Moomen Rider, but also stripped Genos for spare parts. After putting two such beloved heroes through the ringer, the fish-faced freak more than deserved to be turned into sashimi. Hence why Saitama punched him so hard he not only tore his hulking body inside out, but also evaporated all the rain in the city in one blow. Number 13, Jazly Donomikles, Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. No matter how advanced they get, even intergalactic mafias are going to house their fair share of dirtbags, and none come bigger than Jazly. While also under the protection of the Tewas, his bitterness towards the Turbines and Tegadan led him to try and assassinate several of their members, while also cutting deals with Gjallarhorn. While his actions may have killed off best girl laughter, Mikazuki and the rest were at least able to avenge her by having Barbatos Lupos destroy his ship, even as he begged for mercy. <laughs> Number 12, Betelgeuse, ReZero starting life in another world. <laughs> Given what he did to Rem and all the grief that he put Subaru through, it's easy to see why so many wanted this Archbishop of Sin to get his due. Thankfully, with his ever-returning rebirths, Subaru was able to do just that, with wit, some oil, one hell of a chase scene, and a blast of fire magic to the face, the slothful zealot himself and his trembling brain set ablaze, eventually reducing his spidery self into nothingness. Throw in Subaru's reaffirmed determination to protect those he loves, and this exchange truly marked a changing point for the series. <laughs> Number 11, Grand Fisher, Bleach. When this hollow first appeared, it's fair to say the shonen was still finding its feet as far as villains. By the time the Aaron car rolled around, Grand Fisher was practically an afterthought, at least until they brought him back, just so Ishin could settle the score with the monster that killed his wife. Not only did this battle finally tie that little plot point up neatly, but it was also made clear that Ishin Kurosaki is a Shinigami, and a damn powerful one at that. Able to cleave apart a towering behemoth like Resurrection Grand Fisher with just a swing of his sword. Number 10, Prime Minister Honest, Akamega Kill. <laughs> Number 
<laughs> as deceptive as his name is ironic, this royal confidant is the true power in the empire, manipulating the young emperor into easily accommodating his plans, most of which involve the subjugation of innocents and expanding his own influence. He'll slaughter as many innocents as he has to, and sacrifice just as many followers if it achieves his goal. Considering his actions led to the deaths of several Night Raid members, watching Leone pummel his face until it caved in was hugely cathartic. We just wish she could have lived long enough to savor her kill. <laughs> Number 9. Chitu, Hunter Hunter. <laughs> Sure, we can think of a couple more Chimera ants who deserved a smashed school more than the crazy cat, but there's just something about seeing an idiotic henchman dig his own grave that's just so appealing. Granted, he was already a dead man when he squared off against Xenozodiac, so the fact that Silver suddenly descended from the sky and broke the cheetah's head open with one punch proved to be both unexpected yet morbidly hilarious. That's what you get for monologuing. Number 8. The Devil, Black Clover Working behind the scenes and strutting onto the scene at the last minute, the nightmarish devil not only turned out to be the orchestrator of the elves' suffering, and by proxy the instigator of the Clover Kingdom's war with the Eye of the Midnight Sun, but also just the right amount of OP to secure himself as a worthy boss monster for Asta and company to take on. Knowing that he's caused troubles for all races since the days of the first Wizard King, seeing Yami nearly bisect him with his dark magic before Asta landed the finishing blow made for one of the series' crowning moments. <laughs> Number 7. Reus Antinus Sword Art Online Alicization. Given how this stuck-up noble had just attempted to defile a pair of his female colleagues and was moments away from killing Yujio, yeah, we really wanted to see this scumbag get cut to ribbons. Thankfully, Kirito's anime protagonist powers kicked in at the last second, where he was able to not only slice through the bastard's sword, but also lop off his bloody arms in the process. Would have been far more fitting though if he had taken a blade to the nads instead, but we'll take what we can get. <laughs> Number 6. Stefan Havish, Overlord Ainz and his demonic peers pulled some rather shady stuff during their transition to the dark side, but even they appear angelic when compared to this lump of arrogance and depravity. As a confidant for the Eight Fingers, Stefan spent his days abusing his position by kidnapping women and having his wicked way with them, but not before beating their faces bloody for his own perverse enjoyment. As such, watching Seba slap the teeth out of him before ripping a hole through his fat frame was downright exquisite. <laughs> Number 5. Danzo Shimura, Naruto Shippuden Lurking in the shadows of the Hidden Leaf Village and slowly amassing power of his own, Danzo's list of crimes over his tenure as a ninja are as numerous as any of the Akatsuki, especially when it came to his obsession with the Sharingan. Turns out the leader of Root had a collection of them that he'd implanted into his arm, which in turn allowed for the manipulating illusions and calling upon the forbidden art of Izanagi. How fitting that Sasuke was the one to blind him for good, avenging his clan with a lightning bolt to the sternum. 
Hokage ni wa nare nakatta. Number four, King Swain, Vinland Saga. Wales ka kunu to ka erabe. He was a self-described slave to the power of the crown, so Ashlar did him a favor and removed it for him, along with his head. The King of Danes was not a pleasant man, instigating war after war while showing no remorse about trying to have one of his sons assassinated. He may have been a wily player during his reign, but he ultimately lost the game when he made the grievous error of threatening to invade Wales. That behavior won't fly with Lucius Artorius Castus. Number three, Cell, Dragon Ball Z. I'm sure this makes them burn! The ultimate creation was arguably the greatest foe Goku and the others fought during their original Z run, one with a nasty habit of coming back from the brink time after time, even after he literally exploded. Now beyond perfect thanks to his evolving nucleus, Cell was ready to put an end to his tournament with a single Kamehameha. This all leads to the monumental moment where Gohan, under the astral guide of his father, steps up to the plate and unleashes a Kamehameha of his own that, after some serious struggling, finally vaporizes the time-traveling bug right down to the last atom. Number two, Lust, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. <laughs> if there's two things that Roy Mustang is good at, it's setting things on fire and getting ladies on their knees. Who would have guessed he would have used both at once to incinerate the homunculi's femme fatale? After surviving a spike to the gut, the flame alchemist emerges to finish the fight and protect Riza and Alphonse. Despite being badly wounded, it doesn't stop him from using a lighter to blast Lust over and over again until not even her hyper-regeneration can combat the never-ending inferno. Guess some like it harder than most. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Dio Brando – Jojo's Bizarre Adventure – Stardust Crusaders <laughs> Ever since he kicked that dog in the face, this lord of memes has caused the Joestar lineage nothing but trouble and grief. His transformation into a vampire resulted in the massacre of hundreds and led to the death of Jonathan Joestar, while his antics as a stand user ended the lives of both Kakyoin and Joseph Joestar, temporarily but still. Having endured this, Jotaro decided now would be a great time to aura 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 the villain out of existence, which he accomplished in spectacular fashion by punching him so hard his soul shattered. When Jotaro finally exposed his remains to the sunlight, we breathed a sigh of relief that the journey was finally over. Which villain death stuck with you the most? Let us know in those comments below. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.